So if you hear a lot of background noise today, it's because I have like nine kids running around all over in the backyard. And every time they run in and out of the house, the dogs start barking. So I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to cut out, but you know, that's kind of life on my channel really. And we roll with it and enjoy the fact that when I'm in here doing this, the rest of the world is still turning, you know, around me. So, I mean, not like literally around me, I'm not the center of the universe. It's just, they, they don't need me to exist. That all came out very strange. Point is, you might hear them all, and I'm not apologizing for that. I'm going to tell you everything that we're going to do today in just a minute, but before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 22 of 365 days of soap, year two, and we're doing another back to basics today, right? So today we are doing all things oil. We're going to talk about cosmetic oil versus food grade oil. We're going to talk about how to sub out oils, because that's important. Sometimes you don't have the oil that a recipe requires, be it somebody's recipe found on the interwebs, or like your own recipe. Sometimes you run out. And we're also going to talk about the best places to buy oil. Now, this one is going to be a little bit interesting because like through this, I will be making a soap. I'm making my watermelon soap, but like I make a watermelon soap every summer. And so I showed you that last year. So repeating the same content is kind of weird for me. So that's kind of just gonna be in the background while we look through some saponification charts, some matching charts, some what is in a cosmetic oil versus, you know, a food grade oil charts, charts. We're going through charts. We're gonna hang out in the interwebs together today. So, you know, we should go to the video and do that. Okay, so the first thing that I always get asked in, you know, basic soap making classes or even master batch classes is how to choose an oil for a recipe. And I've said it, you know, many, many times on the channel. I really prefer recipes that are what I would call well-balanced. And by well-balanced, I mean, you know, three or four oils that kind of make sense together. So what are you wanting the bar to do? Most standard soap bars, you want them to be, you know, cleansing, obviously, with a nice big bubble, uh, moisturizing, i.e. gentle on the skin, and also, you know, really hard. And so... I like a really healthy, you know, mix of hard and soft oils. A 50-50 or a 60-40 going either way is usually pretty good. Now, Wholesale Supplies Plus has this little chart on its website that kind of gives you essentially the INS numbers, you know, in a nice little ch handy chart form. And so that's a good place to start. Um, there's also a question about, well, apricot kernel oil and cosmetic apricot or sweet almond oil and cosmetic almond or avocado and cosmetic avocado there are cosmetic versions of many many oils out there and the price difference for all of them is significant ish uh, I, I think last time I checked Soper's Choice their regular sweet almond oil was like I don't know, $25 for seven pounds and their cosmetic almond was like $17 or something. 
So that's not a huge price difference, I suppose, but you know, kind of notable. The really notable thing about the cosmetic versus not is for soap making purposes, the saponification value is exactly the same. The real difference is, you know, it's sweet almond oil plus some other vegetable oils, essentially filler oils to make it slightly cheaper and also, you know, comedogen, non-comedogen, all, all the things. And so it really does become a choice as to what you want to put into your soap, knowing that the soap does not impart any of those oil properties necessarily. Now, once you have a recipe figured out and you really, really like it, the time will come when you go to make a soap and you don't have the, re the all the oils needed to actually, you know, make your batch. Or there's a recipe that you found online that contains an oil that you don't want to use or buy or have in stock or whatever. And so there's always a question on how to sub out oils. Now, the uh, the book that I recommended. So here's the saponification values for soaps. And as you can see, so many of them are very, very, very similar. 0.13 is a very similar, it's, it's, it's common throughout a lot of oils. Now remember this 0.13, this is your saponification value is how much lye it takes to um, convert soap into, or oil into soap, right? So that's, one gram of lye, how much lye to convert like essentially one gram of, you know, soap or oil into soap. Yes. Cool. Awesome. Now the book that I recommended, the essentially soap making by Dr. McDaniel, he actually says something in this that I sort of disagree with in that he basically says, I mean, he states explicitly that the best way to convert to sub out oils is to just use another oil with the same saponification value. Now, I disagree with that in part, um, because as you can see with the, you know, the, the saponification chart that I just showed you, there are a lot of oils and butters that have that 0.13, right? And so you would take whatever amount of oil that you want to put in your recipe and multiply it by that 0.13 to give you the amount of lye you need to convert all of that oil into soap. And that's great. And so this was the good old days of soap making where essentially you kind of could do that. It's kind of like for like as far as saponification goes. But let's uh, go ahead and go to the basic three recipe that I gave you, you know, back in the day a couple weeks ago. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and punch this into soap calc. And remember the basic three recipe was basically equal parts of coconut oil, olive oil, and palm. And we will take a look at all of the different, uh, we'll take a look at the recipe itself, the, what the lye is, um, what the saturated to unsaturated fat ratio is, what the INS number is, as well as the fatty acid profile in the recipe, and then compare it to, you know, what happens if we sub it out, sub out one of these oils for another, another oil that has the same saponification value. So this is what the recipe looks like. And uh, the saturated, unsaturated, I like that. 51 to 49, it's about half and half. I like that. It's nice and yep, nice and balanced there for sure. The lye for this is 5.54 ounces of lye. The uh, water is 14.44, which I, it's about 2.4 times the lye. And then you have your INS rating that sits at a total of 169. Again, we've had conversations about how I don't really like using the INS. So, you know, keep that in mind. But then you can look at your fatty acid profiles over there. And we have, you know, 16 lauric, 7 myristeric, 22 palmitic, 4 stearic, no ricinoleic, uh, 39 oleic, and 8 linoleic. So it's a decently balanced bar there. It's going to be, you know, nice and cleansing. It has some moisturizing and it's going to be a very hard bar because of the, the palmitic and the stearic acid in there. So that's great. Now let's go back to the saponification chart and see what we are looking at for replacement for olive oil. Let's say that I ran out of olive oil and it's 0.135. So 0.135, cool. Look at all of the oils that could fall within 
that range. I mean, you have ostrich oil, neem tree oil, macadamia nut, linseed oil, lard. Lard also falls within that, so we're substituting out a semi-solid or a solid for a liquid. Uh, same thing with, actually the hazelnut is actually, that's a pretty good one, I like that. But you know, we have some goat fat and some goose fat and shortening also, Crisco, yes, cottonseed oil, which is actually kind of controversial, so there's that. And look at that, also cocoa butter. Cocoa butter, chicken fat, those fall in with the, the same saponification and beeswax as well. I'm sorry, barrage, not beeswax, not at all, forget that. Almond oil, avocado butter, and avocado oil. So there are a lot of substitutions if you're just going off of the saponification value. Cool, cool, cool. So let's take out the olive oil and instead put in some avocado butter, which is a butter. It's a, it's a soft butter, but it's butter all the same and see how it changes the recipe and you know what the, the big differences are between the two. Now right off the bat, I'm looking at the lye, it's 5.51, whereas the last one was 5.54. Let's go ahead and put them up side by side so we can look at them there. So it's uh, more saturated than unsaturated there, still within decent ratio there. I'm not mad at that INS number. The lye is going to be basically the same as you would ex expect because again, we're swapping out like for like as far as saponification goes. And the total fatty acid actually reasonably similar. It's not terrible. It's definitely, it's not bad. So there's that, which is interesting, right? Because it's a butter, it's a hard oil. And uh, then let's go to, I mean, it's a soft butter. So let's go to a hard butter. Let's go to cocoa butter. Very, very hard. Okay. So let's go ahead and plug in the cocoa butter into this and see how much different the total recipe ends up being for that. Now you would expect the lye to be reasonably the same as well. We're still working with the 5% super fat for all of it. And then the, so the saturated, unsaturated really changed within that. The INS number is very, very high. Again, I don't pay a lot of attention to that, but see the lye number is still the same, still reasonably within that same area, 5.5 ish. And the actual makeup of the bar changed quite a bit. Um, really, really high in stearic acid here. So very, very hard bar and uh, less moisturizing than the original recipe. And I'm gonna try to put all three on the screen. I don't know how well you can see them to really compare everything. So if you're subbing out, you know, just based on saponification value, you're changing the property of the soap a bit in some cases and a lot in others. So, oh, actually we should have done that. We should have actually made a video of doing all three of these recipes and how it all changed. We'll do that. I'll put it on the list. That'll be the next test for sure. But yeah, so I would actually recommend, especially while you're starting out to use Brambleberry's, you know, easy oil substitutes guide here and really start instead of doing just saponification, focus more on what that intended oil or what that specific oil is intended to do in a soap instead of just going strictly saponification values. Okay, I remember always losing my mind trying to figure out where to buy things when I first you know, started the business. And so when I first started out, I would consistently check Brambleberry, Wholesale Supplies Plus, Bulk Apothecary, and Soper's Choice. Now, if you look at this, everything is pretty similar for palm oil with the exception of the Soper's Choice, which is the third down there. And then we look at, but palm oil is a reasonably cheap oil, so you can kind of get it wherever, no big deal, I recommend in bulk. Now this one, we have 322 bucks from, from Crafter's Choice, from Wholesale Supplies, 229 from Brambleberry, 84 from Soper's Choice, and 164 from Bulk Apothecary, and that's for a seven pound bottle. So for your luxury oils, I definitely do recommend going to Soper's Choice over all else because their prices are just so much better 
For the oils that you can easily get locally, like with your box stores, like I have heard tell of people going to big lots for their coconut oil in the States, obviously, and getting them for great prices. So that's awesome. If you have like a local big lots, you know, do do that because they don't have to pay for shipping. I have heard that Soper's Choice shipping has gotten a little crazy, I, but I assume everybody's shipping prices have been crazy right now because we are dealing with a number of different, you know, issues in the, uh, in the world really that's making shipping tough but yeah no I when you can get local and cheap from your big box stores from your Costco's or the like your coconut oil your olive oil do so if you're still at a smaller level but once you really start graduating up to the bigger stuff I recommend always always pricing out Soper's Choice before anything else because even with shipping from they're somewhere in the Midwest and I'm in the Pacific Northwest I estimate about a buck a pound for shipping and have not been wrong on them, you know, yet. They are still cheaper, sometimes just by like 10 cents from Brambleberry, for example, who exists, you know, in my state, or other times by, you know, several dollars or, you know, $20 a pound, depending on what you're looking at, especially when it comes to like your luxury oils. So I would definitely ch check out Soper's Choice and you know up that 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 bulk game you're going to buy it eventually or always always check out Wholesale Supplies Plus when they have a sale because when their items are on sale it's actually a really good deal it's free shipping stock up at that time get all of your olive oil in one fell swoop and then you don't have to worry about you know buying it later but yeah that's a that's a whole lot of talking about oils today for a uh, day 22 hope it helped Okay, and there you have it. Um, all things oil. Yeah, so as far as subbing out oils, the biggest thing that you're going to want to keep in mind is really what it does within the soap, right? So ponification values, as you can see, they're useful to a point, but that only takes you so far because there are solid oils that have the same saponification value as a liquid oil. And those are going to do different things just by nature of them, you know, existing in the soap. So that's not a very good sub. That's not the best indication there. As far as where to buy oils, I really do, um, really, really do recommend you guys kind of upping your game a little bit and going with Soper's Choice. Soper's Choice is by far cheaper than anything else that I've seen on the interwebs to date and very very fast shipping very very professional everything is great and so if you can you know buy seven pounds or 35 pounds or 50 pounds of something instead of one pound or seven pounds or th do that for sure you'll save money in the long run even with the shipping as i said in the video shipping from like ohio i think is where they are to washington state it was still cheaper than how i than i could get it from like brambleberry as i said in the video also i have graduated to the big drums and so I don't actually use Soper's Choice for much of anything anymore but when I need a specialty oil that my supplier does not have I go to Soper's Choice yes and as far as like cosmetic versus food grade ultimately that's a decision that you make on your own for sure I showed you what makes cosmetic versus food grade and um, how that all worked and that's a choice that you can make on your own in your own soaping journey but just keep in mind all of those saponification values we're exactly the same. So that's that. Yes. If you're interested in seeing, you know, what else we tackle with the back to basics or the recipe stuff or the business building stuff and the testing stuff or even our own theme things. Didn't say stuff that time. Totally subscribe to the channel. Do that thing. We are doing this daily as the name 365 days might suggest. So you don't come back. Subscribe. Come back. Come hang out. Be part of our tribe. That would be awesome. For those of you who have subscribed and you are part of the Sudzer tribe, hey, you're awesome. Thank you so much for being so and for being here today for another round of 365 days of soap. I'm out of here, but I'll see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.